I don't know how much you know about PowerCell. We are a spin out from the Volvo Group. Uh, we started the company 2008. 2014, uh, just before the Christmas, uh, we entered to NASDAQ. And today we have the pleasure to be over 10,000 small shareholders. Still, we have the big, strong financial investors on board. However, the Volvo Group is phasing out because it's an industrial spin out. And the reason for spin out is, of course, that they are divesting uh, and leaving the company. However, the three others remain. Uh, we have Midrock New Technology, who is owned by Mohammed Al Moody. We have uh, the governmental fund Fourier Transform, and we have a a company called Finindus with Achiller Metal as one of the largest owner. Uh, we are all centralized in Biskopsgården in Gothenburg, where we intend to build an assembly factory. We have invested a lot in R&D and have the European largest uh, laboratory there. We have a very strong patent portfolio with 73 patents and 30 pending. Uh, we have been working, so we are moving to be a small startup company, to be a more of a leading innovative fuel cell company. Uh, the reason uh, why we exist is this, uh, every day, and uh, especially now when we read about uh, the situation in the US, the climate is changing and there is a big need uh, for doing something very fast. And I think uh, the, all uh, the scientists are aware of that we must cut down the CO2. And one way to do it is of course to move and take out the diesel engines. Uh, we have a situation where the, uh, it's warmer and warmer on Earth. Uh, and uh, if we go back on the, when we had the level of uh, 400 ppm CO2. Uh, at that time, we have also a situation when it was 3.5 degrees warmer than it is today, but more. It was 20 meter higher seawater level. So therefore, uh, we must do something. And uh, everyone, uh, I think, believe that the diesel engine, that there is an end date for that. And then you say, of course, we can take uh, and move into batteries, but we believe that batteries is one step First, you need to electrify your car or your vehicle, and you normally do that uh, and you put in battery. But then you consider uh, that over time, the charging station, the lack of charging station, and also the problem with the grid will make this as a bottleneck to go on with batteries. And there is also other issues around batteries. It costs a lot to produce lithium ion batteries. Uh, there have been uh, investigation around that and CO2 equivalent, if you drive a car, your diesel car eight years, the CO2 equivalent is equal if you produce a Tesla battery. So that's one reason. Then there is a limited uh, volume of lithium ion in the world. And then the most uh, problematic area is the recycling. There is no recycling of lithium ion battery today. The producer take it back and then they drop it. Uh, and that's uh, not a healthy way going forward. So we believe fuel cells is the future. Uh, fuel cells have been known for many years. Uh, Toyota have said that this is uh, the next century fuel, hydrogen. And as you know, if the, the situation that is working is that you have hydrogen and you put that into the fuel cell and you have zero emission. The only thing you came out is water and electricity. This is also a very high efficiency if you compare it with the traditional. You see that it's higher efficiency than it has with uh, the traditional gasoline and uh, diesel engines. So, uh, very fast, uh, why we believe this is coming right now. Uh, more and more cities saying that they will stop uh, with diesel engines. Norway was last year. Dis discussion in Stuttgart next year. No diesel engines if they are not uh, able to six standard. New Mexico, Paris, all of that, and when it starts, it will go come very fast. The other thing is that Toyota is in place. Some of the uh, uh, Japanese car manufacturers are already there, including Hyundai from Korea, and they are now testing vehicles. And you can buy Tesla, uh, you can buy a Mirai today uh, and drive it here in Sweden. The other thing is the infrastructure. Uh, there will be a built-up of infrastructure, and uh, in Germany, a decision has been taken to have 400 fuel cell stations. Here in Sweden, we will add some, but we are slow. 
Uh, Norway is uh, in front of us, Denmark, uh, and especially now we see activity in California, in uh, Japan, and in China as well. And interesting is that it's not standalone fuel cell stations, it's also stations coming from Shell and the big uh, oil company because they now see that there is an opportunity to add uh, a, a hydrogen tank to the normal distribution center. Uh, Weakest is also coming up. Here you see uh, the new SUV from Hyundai where you can drive 800 kilometer. And then of course you have the opportunity with decentralized homes. This is Hans Olof in Angerid in Gothenburg. He produced with his solar panel hydrogen in the summer, store it and then in the winter time he used it into our power cell S1 stack where he produced heat and electricity. He has what we called uh, a situation where he could be uh, totally independent off-grid. That means he can cut the cable to the Eon or Fortum uh, and be independent. So the system going forward is that uh, more and more countries, especially in Japan after Fukushima, when they closed on the nuclear stations, they came over and worked with renewables. So in windy days, they uh, put the electricity into electrolyzer, produce hydrogen, store it, then use it when it's not windy or it's less sun, and they also use it for hydrogen fueling stations. And finally, uh, we see a lot of activity now in China. China have a big problem with the pollution. Uh, from our side, we are very interesting to enter into China. China also have decided to now take a big step into automotive area. They have concluded that it's not enough with battery cars because they have lack of capacity of charging stations and they have also have a situation where you find on the motorway standing still battery cars because they don't have found any, any way to, to load. So they will now take the step here. So there are seven very strong uh, growth um, forces which now cooperate, which will be, I believe, the big change into this industry. Very fast, we are between 1 to 100 kilowatt. We have three different platforms and then we have a lot of customer uh, activities right now and you can see uh, plenty of them here. One I would like to point out is our cooperation in Germany. We have a cooperation now with the big four in Germany where we will develop the future stack based on our S3 stack. And finally, we are now uh, today announced the joint venture, Hyon, it's called, with the Norwegian company Nell and Hexagon, where we combined electrolyzing, producing hydrogen and storing it uh, with the Nell tanks and our fuel cell stacks. Are running over time, but finally, also, we have uh, the situation in China. China will give subsidiary to, if you buy a hydrogen car, 400 sec will you receive if you buy a hydrogen car? That's something else compared with what we are told in, in, uh, have in Sweden here. We are talking about 40, 45,000. So there will be a big change in China. So finally, uh, we are notified. Uh, so if you are interested, buy shares in PowerCell. Wait and see. Thank you. <laughs>